So we're going to do just a little bit of a more vigorous practice today, and it's going to include a different balance practice that we haven't done before. So just kind of put your mind into doing new things. But we're going to start with our usual warm-up. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, hips open, sitting bones down, ribs in and up, shoulders relaxed, arms at your sides or wherever they come and crown reaching to the ceiling. Deep breaths, <clears throat> so letting your belly expand with the breath in as the diaphragm moves, and as it pushes the breath up and out, just exhale tension along with the toxin. Take a moment to get centered into your yoga frame of reference. Remember, personal practice, do what's right for your body at all times. And we're going to inhale and bring the arms up to shoulder level, stretching out through the fingertips and the crown. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows a little back. Keep the chest open. Inhale forward with the arms and exhale them behind you. Clasp the fingertips and push the knuckles toward the floor as you raise your chest, head back toward the wall behind you. And as you exhale, pivot at your hips, coming over into your forward bend. Let your hands come up toward the ceiling, your head in toward your legs, and breathe. So think about lifting the sitting bones, letting the hamstrings get a good warm up along the back of your legs. So kneecaps toward your quads, quads tightening on the front. Keep breathing. And then knees bent a little, chin in, lift your ribs, drop your sitting bones, and wind all the way back up and into the upper body for the back bend, hands toward the floor, chest open toward the ceiling. And then inhaling, come up and release your arms and just take a moment to feel your spine, getting a little bit more energy. And again, inhaling, arms extended at shoulder level, hands to your heart, elbows back, Stretch it to the front, and then exhale behind you, clasping your hands the opposite way. Heart toward the ceiling, head back, stretch, lifting into that upper body back bend. Exhale, pivoting over. And again, just deepen into that lower back stretch as much as your body is wanting this morning. Hands up, head down, sitting bones high, lengthen through the back of your legs. Keep breathing. And then again, chin in, sitting bones down, winding your way all the way back. And chest toward the ceiling, head back, coming into the upper body back bend, working your whole length of your body, lengthening out through the top of your head. And again, inhale, upright, release your arms, take a moment feeling your body. And again, just take a moment, feel what's going on internally. And we're going to bring the arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, and over your shoulder. Pop your hands and clasp them, and bring your arms back by the ears. Sitting bones down, ribs in and up, and lean without twisting over to one side, stretching through the ribs, and pushing the foot you're leaning away from down for a little extra stretch. Keep breathing, maximize as much as feels good. And then inhale back to the center, switch your arms around, shoulders stay down, head up and lean again without twisting, getting into that side stretch. Lengthen out through the top of your body and down into the foot you're leaning away from. Feel the ribs stretch apart. And again on the inhalation, come back. Exhale and release your arms. Take a moment again, feeling just what's happening along your spine as well as your sides. And we'll do our twist. So remember, stretch the spine apart so that there's room to twist. Arms up to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling and over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows for our twist. Bring the arms back by your ears, sitting bones down. Stretch the quads high. And exhale into your twist. Knees a little bent if you'd like. Stretch up, breathing in. 
and pivot over in the twist and relax. So try to keep the weight on both feet evenly, even as you're leaning to one side. Take a few breaths, just relaxing, allowing your body to deepen as much as that feels right for you today. And then keeping your arms still by your ears, slightly bending your knees, work your way up, staying in your twist. Look toward the ceiling and pull your elbows back. And in the twist, not too much in that lower back. And then inhale upright, exhale back to the center, switch your arms around. And again, arms back by your ears, sitting bones down, crown high, and twist the other. Lengthen on the breath in and pivot over in your twist. And again, just deepen as much or as little as you need on this side. See how much that weight shifts to one side. See if you can bring it back centered into both feet. Take a breath. Just relax. And when you're ready to release, stay in your twist as you come back up. Look toward the ceiling, heart high, elbows back, and upper body back. Then go to the top, exhale back to the center, arms up, out at shoulder level, palms down, chest and chin leading, push the sitting bones back, hips pivoting at that top of the thigh, body coming parallel to the floor. And then drop into ragdoll and just hang. Let the back of your body stretch. Chin tucking in. Knees toward your thighs. Tighten the front of your thighs. Let the hamstrings get a good stretch. And if you want, pull in a little more with your hands behind your legs. And then dropping back into ragdoll. One more wind slowly back into mountain pose shoulders back and down and body realigning in mountain pose take a moment feeling how that stimulation through your spine is working this morning hands to your heart look at them inhale and bring the hands toward the ceiling pull the thumbs back and keep gazing at them lifting your heart upper body back bend and then exhaling, follow your hands with your gaze as you come to your heart, pivoting over, dropping again down into ragdoll. Slide your hands up under your knees on your shins, straighten your back. So sitting bones and crown moving away from each other. Kind of tuck that chin back in a little bit to let the neck get a good stretch too. Breathe in, and as you exhale, drop back down, palms together. And inhaling slowly back to your heart and into mountain pose. Take a moment feeling your body and lengthening your spine. So we're going to step at the end of the mat. And we're going to do kind of an abbreviated sun salutation-ish start to our practice. So feet hip width apart in mountain pose, body all nice and straight and aligned, hips open, shoulders open, everything facing the front. And again, hands to your heart. Inhale, bringing them up, looking at your thumbs, and the same thing we just did. Thumbs a little back, chest high, coming into a little upper body back bend. Exhaling, following your hands first to your heart. And then following them again as you pivot over into ragdoll. Slide your hands up onto your shin. Straighten your back. Stretch it out. Tuck your chin. Get the whole back of your body stretching long and straight. And then we're going to bend the knees and bring your hands to the floor. If you like to have your hands a little higher, put a block under you. And we're going to step the right foot back or one foot back into lunge position. So just hips toward the floor at this point, hands under your shoulders, and toes straight ahead. You want your knee right above your ankle, going in the direction of your second toe, not toward the arch, not toward the little toe side. So make sure your knee is right above your ankle. 
And then we're going to pivot that back foot so the heel goes down and the toes are slightly toward the front of the mat and the heel toward the back corner of the mat. And then we're going to keep the weight in both feet evenly and bring your hand up and back and into warrior two. So you'll be standing on both feet evenly with your arms at shoulder level, the front knee right above the ankle. You can have a really wide stance and have that thigh bone parallel to the floor if you want to be in the classic position. Or you can be a little gentler with it slightly at an angle, that's okay. You want the weight into both feet evenly, so really push into that little toe side of your back foot so that you can stand with support going from the earth up through your bone. Take a breath, relax, turn your palms toward the ceiling, and then back toward the floor. That helps to keep your shoulders released and even. So just sink into that position with your hips open toward the side, and we're gonna just keep that hip opening as our practice today. So take a moment and breathe, and we're gonna just shift a little forward, bring your arm to your knee, and the other arm straight above, coming into side angle pose. You can turn your palm toward your head and bring that over into a straight line from your ankle through your hip, shoulder, and hand. Lengthen through that body. Keep breathing. And make sure that this arm that's on your knee isn't weight-bearing. It's just positioning. And then pivot back up, bringing your hands back to shoulder level. Remember, your body goes straight down. It's not leaning forward when you're in warrior two. Hands, palms down. You can rotate and look over that front hand if you want to. Now we're going to go into triangle pose. Straighten your front knee. The legs stay exactly where they are. We're going to pivot at that front hip joint. So push, push, push forward from that hip joint. Whoops, I'm a little unbalanced. Sorry, guys. So push, push, push. Turn the palms to the front. And the more you've pushed, the more your hand will come down toward your leg. Other arm straight above you. And make sure that the weight still is in both feet evenly. Head reaching toward the side so that hips open, the shoulders are open to the side. Everything is aligned. Keep breathing. And then again, lengthening, sinking into both feet evenly. Use that hand that's up to pivot back into standing, palms down, and bend your front knee back into warrior. And remember, sink straight down, don't lean forward. And then we're going to pivot and bring your hands next to your front foot under your shoulders, knee above your ankle, and pivot that back foot so you're back into lunge. Now, this is the part that's going to be a little bit challenging. We're going to push into that front foot and bring the back foot up. So you're going to shift your hands forward so they're under your shoulders as you come into that one-footed position. So you're still using your hands for support. You've got your hips facing the floor. And then we're going to keep the same hand as that front leg that's on the floor down. And we're going to rotate to the side and bring your hand to your hip. If that's good, you can raise that whoops, arm to the ceiling. <laughs> I tried to look too quickly to the camera. So arm to the ceiling and press out through the bottom of your foot behind you, up through that hand in the air. You can have your whole palm on the floor or you can have your block under that front hand or you can have just the fingertips down. And if you're comfortable there, you can rotate and look to the front or up toward your hand. So this is half moon. And then bring your hand back down, rotate your foot, your hip toward the floor, bring your foot down, and roll up into mountain pose. Now, if you have a hard time with that, and some people do, 
You can use a wall behind you so that you have one less dimension to be concerned about when you're up in the balance practice. And remember, it's a practice. So if like I did, you have to step out and back in, that's perfectly okay. That's what we're doing is we're learning what we're doing and we're practicing so that we get it to improve each time we do it. So of course, you know what we're going to do next. Hopefully the same sequence on the other side. So I'm gonna step to the other wall so that, or other end of my mat so that you can still see what I'm doing. I won't have my back to you. You can stay or you can turn so you can see the screen more easily if that's helpful to you. So again, feet in mountain pose. Everything stacked for support. Hands to your heart, shoulders relaxed. And once again, just gaze at your hands as you inhale and bring them towards the ceiling. Keep looking at your thumbs, stay there, or the upper body back then, bringing your thumbs back and your heart a little higher. Take a breath, and as you exhale, follow the hands coming toward your heart, pivoting over and all the way into red doll. Take a moment there and breathe. Kneecaps towards your thighs, tightening the front of your thighs, letting those hamstrings get a good stretch. And then sliding your hands onto your shins, Everything straightening, coming into that halfway up, lengthening stretch. Take a breath. And exhaling, bending your knees, putting your blocks there if you want them, and stepping that foot back into your lunge position. Again, front knee over your ankle. Positioning is really important, remember, especially for your knee. So knee toward your toes, not in toward your arch or out toward your little foot. You don't want the knee leaning either direction. You want that hip coming as nice and low as possible in the back. Sometimes it helps to have those blocks so that everything's in a little bit of better alignment, if that helps you. And again, we're going to move that foot behind so that the heel comes down and the toes forward so that you get the whole foot supporting you behind you. And keeping that front knee above your ankle, you're going to rotate, bringing the arm, pulling you up and into warrior two. Again, knee right above the ankle, weight into both feet, arms at shoulder level. Turn them palms up and then back down to release any shoulder tightness. Breathe and relax. You can look over that front hand in classic warrior two position if you would like. Spread your toes, get a good connection to the earth, and breathe. And then we're going to shift that arm down onto the knee and bring the other one straight above your shoulder into side angle pose. Shift the palm in the direction of your head and bring the arm right next to your ear, getting that alignment from your ankle through your hip, shoulder, and hands. And again, make sure that arm on the leg isn't supportive just positioning so that you get that good straight line. Take a breath, relax. Keep the weight in both feet so that back foot has as much weight into it as the front one, even though that arm is on your leg. And then leading with that hand, pivoting back up, warrior two. Again, keep that front knee right above your ankle. And then we're gonna straighten the knee coming into our triangle pose. So again, lengthen, hips and shoulders facing the side, push through that hip joint, pulling the hip back, reaching, reaching, reaching with the hand forward, palms to the front, and again, pivoting as deeply into triangle as you'd like. So if you're up here with your hand up in the air, that's perfectly okay. You can again use a block under that lower hand if that helps you. So the hand doesn't need to go to the floor. It needs to stay nice and open, palms to the front, so that you're not supporting with the arms. The legs are supporting you. And again, hand in the air pivots you back up and into warrior two. Take a moment there, get your positioning. And then we're rotating into warrior one positioning so that back hip comes forward. 
and bringing the hands next to your front foot under your shoulders. And then push off that back foot and lift the leg up to hip level and get situated into that front foot for your balance. Shift your hands forward a little bit. Make sure your hand that stays on the floor is under your shoulder and a little bit out to the side for positioning. And then if you're ready, bring your hands to the hip and rotate your whole body into that side opening. You can stay looking at the floor or you can rotate to look forward. And then if you're comfortable, you can bring that hand up toward the ceiling. So again, push out through the bottom of your foot, up through that hand in the air, and out through the top of your head. And then when you're ready to release, bring your hand down, rotate your hip toward the floor, and bring your foot next to the other one. And slowly inhale back to mountain pose and standing. So feel your body a little bit more energized as we've used the whole hip area in a lot of different ways. So take a moment and breathe. And again, hands to your heart. And inhale, following them up. Swan dive forward. Exhale over. And come on down to the mat in child's pose. Hips toward your heels. Hands next to your feet, palms up, forehead toward the mat, or all the way down. So take a few moments to breathe. Integrate into that connection with the earth. Take a few breaths. Just relax. And then inhaling, sit back up on your heels and bring your legs out in front to the end of your mat. And we're going to roll down onto our backs. So using abdominals for support, just come down into that reclined integration on the floor. Take a few moments there to adjust and align. So hips are, or sitting bones are sliding slightly towards your heels, getting that lower back nicely connected. And then we're going to bring the arms to T position, and we're going to practice our twist. So for today, we're going to do a twist that uses the whole leg, length of your leg. So press that lower back sacrum area down. So sitting down slightly toward your heels. And then you can either bend your right leg and then put it up to the ceiling or keep it straight and flex your heel and raise that leg so that it comes straight up. So make sure that your back is connected nicely in that lower back area. Your hands are palms up toward the ceiling and your foot is extended as straight up as feels comfortable for you. So abdominals for support, using them a little bit more today. That leg that's extended on the floor, you can be toes up toward the ceiling, knees up toward the ceiling, and pushing out through the whole bottom of your foot. We're going to roll all the way to the left side, bring your foot all the way down, and your hands together on the floor in front of you. So you're all the way on your side, the side of your hip, the side of your shoulder. Keep your head on the floor so you're not straining your neck. Put padding under if you need it. And we're going to take the left hand, lower hand, and hold your foot or your toes. Or if you can't reach that, just your leg. And then bring your right arm or the upper arm up toward the ceiling right above your shoulder. Palm open, look at it, and keep that palm open and the arm right at shoulder level as you lower it toward the floor behind you. So the more you look toward that arm, remember, behind you, the more your neck and shoulder get into the twist. The more the hand comes down or the shoulder, the more your middle back is in the twist. And the more you hold your foot or your toes, the more your lower back is in the twist. So personal practice, do as much or as little as your body needs in this twist and minimize if you've got any 
identifying issues that you need to be careful with. So breathe and relax. The whole side of that leg on the floor, knee and toes are angled toward the front side of your leg on the floor still. Take a breath, exhale tension. The more you emphasize those exhalations, the more things release into the twist, letting the ligaments adjust and the spine align. So just allow it to happen, don't force anything. And when you're ready to release your twist, let go of your leg or your foot, roll all the way onto your back so that your sacrum reconnects and the foot is straight up to the ceiling. Arm still at T position. And leading with the heel, slowly lower that leg, or if that's too much for your abs, just bend the knee, put the foot down, and slide it out. So take a moment as you get back into your T position to notice your spine, the energy flowing through your body, and of course, notice also that you feel like you're not quite balanced. So of course you know that we have to then twist to the opposite side. So go ahead, shift those sitting bones toward the heels a little bit, get that lower back connected, hands T position, palms up, and again, pressing that back down, either straight leg with the left leg or the opposite leg that you didn't use already up to the ceiling. Or you can bend the knee and then put the leg up as high as it wants to go. Kneecap toward your thigh, tightening the front of your thigh so that hamstring gets a good stretch as you press out through the bottom of your foot. Lower back connected, shoulders down, arms, palms up at your T position. And this time we're gonna roll all the way to the right side. My microphone might fall off and you might lose a little bit of what I'm saying, but we're doing the same thing as the other side. So roll all the way to the right, so you're on your right shoulder and right hip. The toes and knees go to the side as well. The hands come together. You can move that foot up and hold your foot or hold your leg with your right arm or the lower arm. And then head stays on the floor, so you might want padding. I'm not putting mine down because otherwise my microphone loses its volume. Hand palm up towards the ceiling, looking at it, and then lowering that arm behind you, rolling onto the back of your head as you look at that hand coming back onto the floor or toward the floor behind you. So again, holding your foot or toes or leg on that front leg for your lower back twist. Hand, arm, shoulder coming toward the floor behind you for your middle back twist. Head turning and looking that direction for your neck and shoulder twist. And again, breathing, exhaling, just relaxing, letting the spine release and move into its twist, allowing any adjustments to occur, but not forcing anything. Just allow your twist to happen as much or as little as your body needs this morning. Deepen your breath, just relaxing and allowing yourself to maximize or minimize the twist on this side, however much is appropriate for you. Again, that whole bottom leg is facing the side, hip and shoulder are more or less on the floor as well as you're turning your whole body, hips, ribs, shoulder, and head toward the arm behind you. And then when you're ready to release, you let go of your foot or leg and roll onto your sacrum, adjusting so that everything is again aligned. Foot toward the ceiling, heel pressing out. And again, with your arms at T position or shoulders down, we are lowering the leg heel first, or you can still bend that knee and put the foot down and then slide it out. As your leg gets all the way back to the floor, readjust, allowing yourself to have a comfortable position with your lower body and your torso, and shift your hands near your hips, palms up into corpse position. 
And remember, if your lower back feels strained in corpse position, you can bend your knees slightly, put padding under them, or you can put your feet on the floor with your knees slightly toward each other for support if you prefer to have a little bit more lower back support. Deepen your breath, exhale the tension, and just allow your body to sink into that surface beneath you. You're a little more vigorous today, so feel your whole body and allow any part that's still tense or tight to relax, deepening into that earthbound connection. Let your shoulders sink, let your belly soften, let your hips relax. You can keep adjusting if you need to, to make sure that you're as comfortably situated as your body needs. Deep breaths in, exhaling, just letting your body grow heavy and soft, sinking into the earth embrace. Let Mother Earth support your body and just release any thoughts from your mind about your body, letting it completely relax. And as your body relaxes, just allow your mind to drift as well. As you stop thinking about your body, other thoughts will come to your mind. Let them drift away just as easily as your breath. Thoughts flowing in and flowing out without paying attention to the content. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, there's no need to think of the past or anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts drift away without awareness. And as your body relaxes and deepens into the earth and your thoughts release and float away into the atmosphere, just let your awareness Fill with the peace within, turning inward, finding peace, filling your body with peace and your mind floating in peace. Just be peace. And as always, if you'd like to stay relaxing, feel free to do so as long as you'd like. If you're ready to start energizing for the rest of your day, just begin breathing deeply, drawing energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe deeply, just begin moving your body gently, allowing your hands and feet, arms and legs to be releasing. Give yourself a good stretch if you'd like that. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, bend your knees, pull your heels near your hips, and draw your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around. Let your body know with a good yoga hug that you appreciate its work this morning in yoga and the work it does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, Hands down, rolling to the side, sitting back up, and preparing for whatever's ahead for your day today. Thanks for joining me.